Now that we downloaded the VNC software to the desktop of the old computer or our server, we can install it and begin setting it up. So I'll double click on the install file. And it's a typical wizard based installation, so I'll click next. Oh, there's some terms here, click next. Select the folder you want to install to, click next. Now there's three components that you could install. Uh, I'm going to install the server and the viewer. I'm not going to install the web pages and documentation. So I'll click next and click next again. Now there's an option here, server configuration. We want to click register the new type VNC server as a system service. What this will do is as soon as the computer starts up, this will automatically start running this so that when we start it, we can connect to it automatically. It's ready to be connected to from our desktop. So we'll click next, then click install. It takes about two seconds to install. We'll click OK, finish. And there's uh, one setup option that you want to do. So I'll click setup programs and I'll launch the server and if you notice there's a couple things here it says password so I just want to set a password in here and make it something that you'll remember and say apply okay and that's it so now next time this computer restarts this service will start running and I'll as soon as it's up and running I'll instantly be able to connect to it from my desktop Now we need to know the IP address of the server machine so that when we try to connect to it later from the desktop we know where we're looking. So to find your IP address on your machine go start, run, then type cmd and hit enter. Now that will bring up the command prompt. When you're at the command prompt you have to type IP config, all one word and hit enter and this will give you a couple different numbers. It will give you first it will give you the name of your network so whatever you named your network it will give you your IP address on the network and then a couple other pieces of information. So mine is 192.168.2.2 I'll write that down so when I use the desktop to connect to this server later I know what address to put. Now that we've installed the software on the server computer, we're going to be working on the new computer now. So I've also downloaded the VNC software to the desktop of the new computer and we'll install it here. So same thing, you walk through that same wizard, click next, click next again, decide what folder you want to install it to. And then the same set of options here. So again, we definitely don't want the web pages and documentation. I also don't want to run the server on this computer, I just want to run the viewer. So I'll uncheck server and I'll click next and next again and next again so then we'll click the install button and begin installing so the viewer installs real quick we'll click finish and we are done running it Now that we have the software installed on the server computer and on our desktop computer, our main computer, we're ready to connect to the server computer. So what I've done is I started the server and it's running right now and what I want to do is find out the IP address that it's on. Now if you remember I wrote down the IP address on a piece of paper earlier but what I'm also going to do is I'm logged into my router right now and I'm looking at the client list of the router so this is telling me any computers that attach that are attached to my router right now and if you look here there's uh, the computer I'm on and then the server computer and here's the IP address of the server so I'm gonna just copy that down and now I'm gonna launch the viewer software so I'll double click that to launch it and it's already set up in there but I could just paste in or type in the IP address of the server computer 
Now, there's a couple different connection options you could set low bandwidth, default, high speed network. If I go to high speed network and I click connect, the first thing it wants to do is it wants to know the password for the server on that machine, and it's the password we set up earlier. So I'll type that in and click OK. And now, it's connected to that server and what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the server computer right now now it didn't log all the way into the computer because uh, I didn't put in the Windows password for that computer so I'll just click on my ID there and I'll type in the Windows password to that computer click start and it'll finish logging all the way in and in a minute we'll see the desktop of that computer So as that computer starts up, you'll see the desktop for that computer. Then if I click over here, you'll see the desktop for the, the, de the computer that I'm working on right now. And I can click back here. And you see the mouse kind of does a funky little thing as I move back and forth. And now I can do anything I want on that computer as if I'm sitting right there at, a, at the keyboard and the mouse of that computer. So if I want to launch a program, I'll just go to Start. And I can you know open up the browser there. and do whatever I want. Um, might take a minute or two to launch. So once that launches, you know, if I want to go to Google, just type that in and go to Google. Um, you know, if I want to go to anywhere there, I can just type that in and do it. Uh, close that. I can launch, you know, any other software that might be running on this computer. So if I wanted to say, I don't know, run Notepad or whatever else. I don't really have a lot of software installed on this computer because the only thing I really want to use it for is a server to back up my other computers on the network and I want to use it as a server to host my uh, my files and my applications, things like that. So if I right click and say uh, explore, you could see a couple things. You could see where I created a file called backup and one of the things I have backed up there is my iTunes library with all my music. I have uh, my documents all backed up there and a couple other things. I, I have a backup of uh, my website information, things like that. So, so things I just don't want to lose. And I can close that like that. Now the other nice thing is when I'm done using that computer and I want to turn that computer off, I don't have to run all the way over to wherever that computer is and shut it down. I could just go start turn off computer turn off the first thing you'll notice is the uh, connection drop so it closes the window because the the server is now turned off so I can't see that computer anymore and in another couple seconds uh, I don't know whether you can hear it or not but you'll hear the the that's an old noisy computer the the hum just drops and the that means the computer's off and uh, you can't see it but I'm looking over and I see the little green light on that computer just turned off so those are some of the things you could do. In the next episode that I have, I'm working on right now, we're going to show you how to do some really cool stuff with that computer. So you how to set the backup up so you can always send your back your files up to that computer, show you how to connect to it through the network, and do all kinds of other stuff.